When Mad Max Fury Road was released by Warner Brothers back in 2015, Mad Max Saga mastermind George Miller already had ideas for more Max Rakatansky stories and a prequel that would focus on the Furiosa character. Unfortunately, before he could move forward with any of them, his production company had to take Warner Brothers to court over unpaid Fury Road earnings, an issue that slowed things down for years. The problem was finally resolved, and now, nine years after Fury Road, the prequel Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, has made its way through production and is set to reach theaters on May 24th. In anticipation of the film's release, we have compiled a list of everything we know about this one, and you can check it out right here. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Directed by Miller from a screenplay he wrote with his Fury Road co-writer, Nico Lathuris, Furiosa has the following official synopsis. As the world fell, young Furiosa is snatched from the green place of many mothers and falls into the hands of a great biker horde, led by the warlord Dementis. Sweeping through the wasteland, they come across the Citadel, presided over by the Immortan Joe. While the two tyrants fight for dominance, Furiosa must survive many trials as she puts together the means to find her way home. Miller and Lathuris wrote the script long ago, in fact, Miller has said that it was virtually complete even before Mad Max Fury Road started filming in 2012. The story begins 15 years before the events of Fury Road and spans across those 15 years, leading directly into the previous film. As for why the story is being told, Miller has said, quote, When we wrote Mad Max, the task was to tell a story that was always on the run and to see how much the audience could pick up in passing. That was one of the tricks of Mad Max Fury Road, that there would be references to things of where she's from, why they're doing things, but it was always on the run. There were very few moments of quiet. We never explained how she lost her arm. We never explained what the actual green place of many mothers was. We never explained the workings of the Citadel. So we had the screenplay virtually complete before we shot Fury Road. And we did it because it arose out of wanting to explain to everybody who Furiosa was. To Charlize Theron when she took on the role, and to all the actors and the designers and everybody else working on the Citadel and so on. The feeling was, gee, this is a pretty good screenplay. And then I kept saying to myself, if Fury Fury Road works, I'd really like to tell this story. So it came about, I'm not going to say accidentally, but it came out of a need to explain Fury Road's world, which essentially happened over three days and two nights. It's really trying to explain how that world came to be. There's a chance that parts of the story may be familiar to Mad Max fans, as some of the prequel elements Miller had put together were published as comic books around the time of Fury Road's release. Do not, my friends, become addicted to water. It will take hold of you. And you will resent its absence. When he was first planning Furiosa, Miller thought he would be able to bring Fury Road's Charlize Theron back to play the younger version of the character, and they would do some CG de-aging on her. But despite the valiant attempts on Martin Scorsese's The Irishman, he came to the decision that CG de-aging just hadn't been perfected yet. There's still an uncanny valley effect when watching people who have been de-aged, so the character had to be recast. While it was rumored that Killing Eve actress Jodie Comer might be in the running to play Furiosa, the role ended up going to Anya Taylor-Joy of The Witch, who Miller first saw in Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho. Although Taylor Joy doesn't have a driver's license, she did perform her own stunt driving in the film. When she learned she wouldn't be starring in Furiosa, Theron told The Hollywood Reporter, quote, It's a tough one to swallow. Listen, I fully respect George, if not more so in the aftermath of making that film with him. He's a master and I wish him nothing but the best. Yeah, it's a little heartbreaking for sure. I really love that character and I'm so grateful that I had a small part in creating her. She will forever be someone I think of and reflect on fondly. Obviously, I would love to see that story continue, and if he feels like he has to go about it this way, then I trust him in that manner. We get so hung up on the smaller details that we forget the thing that we emotionally tap into has nothing to do with that minute thing that we're focusing on." End quote. Theron and Taylor Joy didn't discuss their shared role until after the production ended. Taylor Joy told People, quote, Charlize was sweet enough. I think both of us ended up in a situation where we were both so respectful of each other that we didn't want to reach out prior to filming. The second it's over, we're having dinner and we're going to swap war stories for sure, end quote. And then? They're looking for hope. What about you? Redemption.
Beyond Taylor Joy, the cast also includes Chris Hemsworth as the biker warlord Dementis, with Tom Burke and Quaden Bales in unspecified roles. Alila Brown appears as a young Furiosa, and Nathan Jones and Angus Samson are said to reprise their Fury Road roles of Rictus Erectus and the Organic Mechanic. IMDb has a list of characters with names like Smeg, Hiss Boy, War Boy, Treadmill Rat, Blackfinger, Fang, The Wretched, Corpse Minder, Mr. Harley, and Mortifier. Don't expect to see Nicholas Holt show up as his Fury Road character Nux. As Holtz told ComicBook.com, quote, Going into Fury Road, I knew all of Nux's life up until the moment we meet him in that film. And obviously as Furiosa is a prequel, it's earlier. Nux would have maybe just about been born, and I don't think I could play a six-month-old or a year-old. It would be a stretch for me, end quote. Hemsworth has said that working on Furiosa was, quote, by far the best experience of my career and something I feel the most proud of, end quote. He came into the film exhausted, wondering how he was going to get through it, but as soon as rehearsal started, it reignited his creative energy. Quote, it made me think the work isn't what's exhausting, it's what kind of work it is, and how invested I am in it and if it's challenging in the right way, end quote. Lady and gentlemen, start your engines! Miller, Lathuris, Jones, and Samson aren't the only Fury Road holdovers on Furiosa. The film also shares editor Margaret Sixel, production designer Colin Gibson, sound mixer Ben Osmo, makeup designer Leslie Vanderwalt, costume designer Jenny Beaven, and composer Junkie XL. Furiosa was the biggest production ever for Australia, surpassing the $150 million production of Boz Luhrmann's Australia, which was recently worked into a miniseries called Fairway Downs. It created 850 jobs and brought $350 million Australian dollars, which is around $230 million American, to the local economy. Miller is producing the film with Doug Mitchell. I'm high away, dude. It will ride eternal, shiny and chrome. While it seems clear that he's not a major character, Miller has never said whether or not Max Rokotansky will be making an appearance in Furiosa, but he did say, Max is lurking around somewhere in the story. If you're more interested in seeing Max than you are in seeing Furiosa, don't worry. Miller has said that he has two more Max stories in mind, one of them being the Mad Max The Wasteland movie he was already mentioning by name back in 2015. So what do you think? Are you looking forward to Furiosa? Let us know by leaving a comment below. Just one angry shot for Furiosa. Cut.